So what kind of heat capacity can we expect? Well, there's a couple ways to determine how big your boiler needs to be. Uh, assuming you're going into new construction and you're not, you know, just replacing a boiler that's already there. Uh, I'm going to show you the bulk rate method because this is what most people use, but there, you can also count loops. But let's go ahead and take the first one. It's fairly straightforward. Our gallons per minute that was required is our BTU hours divided by uh, the temperature change in the loop times 500. The 500 is a conversion factor to get all the units right. Uh, delta T is the temperature difference between the supply and the return water in the loops. And uh, generally that's 20 degrees. You're putting the water out um, 120 up to 100 and even 180 degrees. And if you contain things to the 300 foot loops for the correct pressure drops, you got the correct flow rate of about 0.6 gallon per minute for a half inch PEC system, you should be able to keep 20 degrees. So if you send out the water at 140, it comes back on the return line at 120. Uh, that, I'm sorry, yeah, 120. So if we look at that formulation, and let me get to the calculator here if I can find it. There it is. Uh, we'll say, okay, our BTU hour for this house uh, is somewhere around 55,000. And we'll divide that by 20, the um, temperature drop. And we'll divide that by 500 again. And we get about five and a half gallons per minute. So this is a very rough sizing of the size of the boiler you need for the home. It's about five and a half gallons. And that, by gosh, uh, is probably about right. Now, the pipe diameter uh, can be found then, uh, if you really want to calculate it, it's the square root of 0 0.4088. That 0 0.4088 is a correction factor divided by uh, the velocity of the water in the pipe, which for PEX is 8 feet per second, times that GPM. So we'll go back to the calculator. A little bit of math on this one. Um, the velocity is 8 feet per second, so we go 0 0.4088 divided by uh, V, 8 feet per second, <clears throat> is 0 0.0511 times our 5.5 gallons per minute and then the square root. And we get 0.53 or half an inch. So, you know, you have to round to the nearest. So it's it's the half inch pecs will work. It's a little, you know, this recommends something a little larger, but not much. So the formulas more or less work out. And I, again, I don't want to get too much math into this. There is a lot more that you could be doing. Uh, but because we don't have the software to our availability, there's hardly any use showing it to you uh, other than I, I, it's explained in some of the uh, videos that I have up for you on YouTube. And we say most homes go with the 3 8 or half inch PEX tubing. You're going to probably want the half inch because this is a cold environment that we're putting uh, this system into. The other trick is just the per line method and it's real simple uh you calculate the total length and sizes for the pecs for the home so you say okay i'm going to use half inch for almost all this um, i've got all these different lengths i've got all these different loops and you, and you determine the total number of loops and then you simply multiply that by your you know 0.6 and it'll come out about the same maybe a little higher a little lower uh, this is this is a little more accurate approach, but it takes longer to do. Um, and it, it'll be close to the bulk method. It, these two methods will not match. The, the previous method, the bulk method, is just to kind of get you in the ballpark real quick. This will fine-tune that answer. And you may find it goes up a little bit because it, it's a slightly, well, in that big a home. should be close to 5.4. Well, how do you figure then if you have enough heating? Because here's the question. You've only got so much spacing on the floor. You've got all this floor space. You can go 9 inches, or if you in a pinch, you can drop down with half-inch pipe to 6-inch spacing. Is that enough? Well, what you do is you divide the BTU requirement of the room by the square footage in the room. And that'll tell you how many BTU per hour square feet you need. 
um, and you can use the closet space to increase the square footage that's allowed. Um, if the result is less than 30 BTU per hour, then you can use standard 9-inch spacing for the half-inch PEX pipe. It'll work based on that chart that we showed in the second uh, slide. Use 6-inch sp spacing, and that'll get you up to about 35 for a half-inch pipe. It didn't show that on the chart, but that's about what it'll get you. And again, we usually only do that in bathrooms. But, you know, if the number, however, is greater than 35 that you need, BTU per hour per square foot, and you do have one such room in this house, I'm going to show you, you'll have to add radiant heat as well um, to the wall. It's the only way to get around it. And uh, so what you'll do then is then you got to divide the square feet, foot of the room by 30 uh, to figure out exactly what it is you need. And any overs you'll take up in the wall. So let's see that because I, my guess is you might be a little confused on that. Okay, the dining room example. The BTU requirements is 49.15 BTU per hour, and I got that from our handout. Whoops, sorry. There it is. I got that from our handout. Scroll down here. Dining room. 49, 12 and a half, so I just ro rounded it up to 49, 15, and I've got 117 square feet of area in that dining room. So the square footage is 117. I divide 49, 15 by 117. I get 41.5 BTU per hour per square foot. That's well above anything that radiant heat can get you. So you say, great. The dining room. Why isn't the dining room working? Well, here's why. I mean, it's worth asking this question. Why is that value so flippin' high? Well, remember our house layout? This is the west wall. The winds in the winter come primarily from the west, so this, all that cold air is blowing against this dining room, and we got this great big sliding glass door here. So this is tricky. These two bedrooms are a little higher, too. They, they, the heating requirement for bedroom two and four is higher than bedroom three. If you go in and look, um, not much, but it, they're a little bit higher. And again, it's because they're against this back wall. That's why. So, it's a high, it's a high heating requirement for that room. It's pretty severe. And it's just too large for radiant heating. So if we divide through by 30, what this tells me is I need 164 square feet. So that 49.15 by 30 says I need 164 square feet. I only have 117. So the other trick I could do is I can subtract 164 and subtract 117 out from it. So 117 from 164 is 64. I could add another 64 square feet of pipe. Oh, or needed in the walls and then at the nine inch spacing if I use 64 square feet of wall so the walls are eight foot high so if I took an eight foot section I would be okay so what that tells me is is uh, for that dining room I've got eight feet here I don't have 14 feet here because right because I got the door which is you know six seven feet wide but i've got about seven feet and eight feet i do have enough space so what i would have to do is run my pipe over and loop up into the walls as well and back and around and if i did that on the two outer walls and added that extra space 